Oh, I see you there. So you're probably wondering what this is. So this is a crazy cart swivel that has been 3D printed and uses about $5 worth of Ace Hardware parts. And it uses the old components from the original crazy cart swivels. So let's go see how it's made. We've got our 3D print over here. We've got with the main body, got the inner bearing, uh, we've got, or the inner spacer, we've got these multitude of sizes of spacers because when you first start off, you never really know with these wheels what side you'll need and you'll probably need two different sizes. Then we've got our bolt, eight millimeters by 100. We've got an eight millimeter lock nut. Then we've got a eight millimeter by 20 a washer inner bearing that goes inside i got an adjustable two wrenches and the old piece of junk wheel that comes with the crazy cart and we're going to be using a few parts from here um, so let's get to it um, the first thing i'm going to do is take off the pieces from the 3d print let's take the old wheel apart and i'll explain which we, which components we'll need We'll need the lock washer that comes off of it. Then this is the swivel portion of it. Allows it to free spin around. Uh, take this off. We'll take our adjustable on one end. Then we'll put our wrench on the other. We'll take off this lower bolt. And this lower bolt isn't usable because it's not tall enough for the new main assembly housing. So we won't use it. Um, as you can see, there's a pretty big difference in size between these. Yeah, don't use that. We could use the washer if it's still good. Some of them don't come with good washers. So I would definitely recommend getting the right run from Ace Hardware or your local hardware shop. So here comes the messy part. So they do fill these with grease. So what we'll want to do is we'll take it and we'll flip it upside down. Then you could basically throw this out. If you're lucky enough, maybe you could take this uh, bearing out, but I wouldn't suggest it because it would require you to cut this open. Um, but if you're bold enough to do it, then be my guest. All right, so these are the main parts we need. This is typically metal. This is the inner bearing, but we won't need this because we 3D printed our own, which is a little bit bigger, and it's custom to the size of this. We've got two parts. This is our lower, and this is what all the ball bearings rest on. So we'll take that off. And we also have this seal here and the seal is what hopefully keeps all the dust out and keeps the grease inside this part that all the ball bearings rest on we're going to have to clean up because we're actually going to be required for this install to take this heat it up with a couple lighters and then we're going to basically fit it into position because we don't want this moving around because then this whole thing would start sliding around and your ball bearings would fall out so let's get cleaning this All right, so now we're gonna want to hold this with a pair of pliers or whatever you have. We're gonna use a lighter, or if you have a torch, this will just work a lot faster, but I assume most people have lighters. So we'll just start heating this up. Okay, so now we'll take our main top assembly and we'll put it in there. Then you'll want to adjust it. Awesome. So if you notice, it's not gonna come out anymore. It's not shifting anywhere. That's what you wanna see. All right. So the next thing we'll wanna do is put in our bearing. There we go. So we'll take that. You want to take your bearing and you'll write a fit it right inside of there. Uh, 
if your print is a little bit off, you might need to push it in there with some type of, um, I usually typically use a wrench or anything else. Then we'll want to take our other piece that we took off of the original one and we'll want to take our spacer. This is our inner spacer and we'll want to put it on top of that old piece or I guess on the shaft of that piece. Now, the purpose of this is when you tighten it down, uh, you don't crush the ball bearings against the plate because then you won't get that swivel action happening. After we've got that, we'll want to take our plate and then we'll flip our wheel, our swivel over and we'll push it down onto there. Uh, the shaft won't go all the way through the bearing. That's because of the redesign. The old one didn't support, uh, doesn't have the sight height for that. We'll take our bolt and we'll put it in there. First hand tight it, tighten it. Go take my 14, 13 millimeter, tighten it by hand first. Give it a test run to see it still moves. So it does move, allows for swiveling. Now we'll take our adjustable. We'll want to put it on the top there. And this is just a lot easier to do now than it is later. So we'll tighten it up. And if our inner bearing has worked, this will still allow us to swivel just like that. So if we want to, we can just spin it. Um, it might be a little bit of friction, but if you greased it properly and you don't over tighten that bolt, you should be good to go. One thing else I find helpful is if you use a pencil, it'll make it a lot easier when you have to push the spacers together. It'll basically grab the spacers. So let's find out which ones we need. go then we'll take our bolt so we'll push our bolt from one end to the other with the pencil of course we're gonna get stuck a little bit we'll wiggle it around Give you some force and there we go perfect all right, hardest part is almost over. Then we'll take our bolt, our lock bolt. Make sure that this is a lock bolt because if it's not, they do tend to come off because of all the spinning and the movement of it. So we'll take our adjustable on one end. Then we'll take our wrench on the other. Start turning it, locking it in place. And you don't want to tighten this too much because you still want that wheel to be able to move. And there we go. So our lock washer that came off of it. Boom. Now you've got a swivel that can go onto your crazy cart and last you forever. So satisfying. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.